Let's talk about the next topic in line, which is the motion of objects under the influence of gravity. The first thing you should know is that every object on Earth is attracted towards the center of Earth via a phenomena called gravitation, which was discovered by Newton. You must have studied about this in the lower standards. However, uh, what you will learn in more detail in the chapter of gravitation is that the value of gravitational acceleration as you go up or go down from the Earth's surface changes. Typically, it decreases, right? But for all practical purposes, for all the phenomena happening close to the surface of Earth, the gravitational acceleration is almost constant. That constant value is equal to 9.8 meters per second square, which we also sometimes take as 10 meters per second square for the ease of calculation. Now, all equations of motion are valid for motion under gravity. Why? Because the acceleration value is constant which is equal to 9.8 meters per second square. So, we will be very uh, easily using the equations of motion to solve problems of free fall under gravity. Now, let us look at how the equations will transform themselves if we apply them in the situation of free fall. Now, first of all, the sign convention I choose for motion under gravity is up is positive and, and down is negative. The typical sign convention that you have learnt in mathematics about the y axis. So, if that is the case, my original equations of motion are uh, mentioned in the first column. In the second column are the transformed versions when I apply it for the situation of gravity. The acceleration becomes the gravitational acceleration which is g and g clearly acts downwards. So, I uh, replace a with minus g and my first equation becomes v is equal to u minus dt. The second equation is s is equal to ut plus half a t square which becomes h is equal to ut minus half gt square h is simply the height which replaces displacement because this time I am carrying, uh, I am having height vertically and acceleration becomes minus g just like the first equation. And the final equation is v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s which becomes v square is equal to u square minus 2 g h. Once again height becomes, height takes the place of displacement and acceleration is replaced by minus g because g will be acting downwards. Now, let us talk about a simple example to get a physical feeling of motion under gravity. So, over here we have a ball projected upwards with a speed 30 meter per second only under the influence of gravitational acceleration whose typical value is 9.8 meter per second square or 10 meters per second square. Now, we will try to map out the motion of this ball by taking snapshots every 0.5 seconds. Please take a good look and try to get a physical idea about how the motion under gravity will happen. ball reaches the top point and the ball comes back to the original height. Now, as you can see the time taken to go up to the maximum height is 3 seconds and the total time taken for the motion is 6 seconds which means the time taken to come down is also equal to 3 seconds. Now, here like I said the snapshots are taken every 0.5 seconds and there is lot of information on this so we will deal, uh, deal with them one by one. So, first of all let us look at the velocity value. Our initial velocity is 30 meter per second which is u value. Now, as the time passes after every half second you can see the velocity decreases by 5 meter per second or in other words with linear change of time we have linear change in velocity. So, every 5 meter per second decrease for every half second increase in time. Now, while coming down you can see once again the same thing is repeated for every half second increase there is half uh, this 5 meter per second increase in velocity. So, there is a linear variation of velocity with time. Why is it happening? This is happening because of the first equation of motion which says v is equal to u minus g t which means there is a linear relationship between v and t. So, as I vary t eventually my velocity will also vary linearly with it. However, look at the values of height. The values of height if you just look at them pictorially looks like a quadratic function of time. So, as you can see as my time keeps on increasing the, the variation of height with respect to time is quadratic in nature. If I join all the top points it will give me sort of a parabolic curve. This tells me that the second equation of motion is, re is responsible for this behavior because s is equal to ut plus half at square tells me that as the time varies the displacement will be a quadratic function of time or in this case height will be a quadratic function of time. The same thing is clear while coming down as well. The value of height every five uh, every 0.5 seconds is exactly same as you can see from the figure and the variation is quadratic in both the situations. Another important thing is that the uh, that the ball had a velocity 
of 30 meter per second upwards when it was thrown when it came back to the same height it had a velocity of 30 meter per second once again this time pointing downwards that's the only difference please take a good look at this diagram and try to understand the motion under gravity physically so that you have ease and calculations later when you deal with problems thank you